Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Tory G. We finna get to it, you know what I'm saying? Finna talk about Antelope Audio, AFX to DAW, AFX on like the DSP on board, and um, uh, how to set up the analog summing within the Orion Studio Synergy Core. Uh, so if you have like a mix bus uh, chain that you want to use, this is how I set up my mix bus chain with analog hardware. Um, and I can show you guys how to do it uh, through the like straight up through the uh, what you call it, man, the software way. Like you can emulate analog summon. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, shoot, my camera, my camera, y'all. Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> I done forgot to set that up. Stand by. All right. All right, let's just go with this for now. I don't know what this screen is in the middle of my screen. But uh, we're going to get it popping. All right. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. We in this thing. This is the beat that you guys heard the other day. Um, I'm just going to continue to use it as an example here. So within the I'm using my interface, my main interface is my um, Orion Studio Synergy Core, right? Synergy Core means that it has the ability to process effects right right inside of the interface and it has internal routing system. So everything can be routed um, any way you want, basically, or almost any way you want that any way that makes sense to the workflow. Right. So let's talk about how to set it up. So the top here, you got your options. Uh, I'm connected via USB. I'm running 48K um, for my sample rate. So I got my microphone on 48 volt um, for phantom power. Um, you would turn that off for dynamic microphones and then you got all your mic inputs basically up here, right? Um, so the routing down here is uh, I'm going to be using my PD70. It's a dynamic microphone, but I'm running it with a uh, uh, amp, an inline amp, so I have to use phantom volt, so disregard that. But, um, so basically, you want to set up your inputs and outputs, right? So, comp play is basically anything starting in the computer, right? So, the way that this is set up, comp uh, out number one and number two here. This is actually named number one and number two before you edit it. This is everything coming out of the computer, talking about iTunes, your your web browser, any audio coming directly from the computer. Um, and then three through whatever is how you set up in your DAW, right? So I have a D box, right? And I have and it has eight eight single uh, channels for routing, uh, which ultimately goes down to um, four stereo pairs so music left and right vocals left and right drums left and right bass left and right so starting at three and four five six seven eight nine and ten those are the um the outputs within your DAW you're going to be setting up and this is at least how i set it up within studio one okay so first things first right now that you've got um your DAW output set up, you highlight or you select them, you can hit shift and then select all the way down. And I don't know if you noticed it, but you can see that all these are now highlighted. So what I do first is I highlight these and you drag them, you can drag them down to your output. So I want it to go to comp record. Boom. That's going to go to the uh, correct tracks. And then I'm also dragging it down to AFX in 
just in case I want to do some effects processing within the um, interface, right? So now that I've got the effects in, now I can label these music left. All these correspond to the same thing, except now, now that I've got the DAW output set to go into the interface, that's basically what I did here. I took the DAW outputs, set them to the interface, and now I can do effects within the interface. And I'll show you how to get to that in a few minutes. So now we go back to, <laughs> it says input up here, but it's a little confusing. So this is why I'm explaining it. So now we go back to this, this is AFX out, right? I'm gonna highlight these and I've already renamed them and I'm gonna drag them to my line outs. These line outs are the actual physical outputs on the back of the interface. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or I can't count. One, that's two, four, six, and a shoot. I can't count y'all. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Why do I have nine? I think I'm tripping here. Oh, I got two music L's. And that's why that don't make sense to me. All right, let's try this again. Let me bring this back. Let me so, and this is how it's easy it is to correct it. You can just drag and drop over the correct thing. And I'm just going to get rid of this extra one. Oh, crap. I muted the row, but you can just drag and drop it. I think, oh, I duplicated it there also. See, you can just get delete that and just name it. Uh, I think it was 10. Boom. Now that's 10. That really shouldn't be there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Man, no, I was right. I'm tripping. I'm tripping, dog. Because I started on two. Or I mean, I started on three. That's right. My bad. I cur I digress. Um, base right. So that's gonna be your ba my base uh, bus. And then it's actually gonna be the AFX version after running it through the the uh, the interface. My fault. I'm tripping. So I got all these set. So this is one through eight. So if you can just see it up here, I wish they would put numbers up here, but one through eight, okay, four stereo pairs. All right, moving on. Now that I've got that set up, what that's gonna do is set up the um, output into the D box. So all these physical outputs go to the D box. And what that's gonna do is send those outputs outputs into actual analog hardware and now depending on how you plug in your uh d box and all that stuff back into hey what's going on neo back into um your interface i just go straight back into my orion however you want to do it there has to be a way back in so my sum mix so out of the d box goes back into the daw right so that's my uh inputs 11 and 12 right okay boom now i also want to set it here 11 and 12 here actually i might redo this so it actually corresponds 11 and 12 so it all like matches up and i'm just going to mute these which actually means just get rid of it okay so now 11 and 12 comp record is going to be what you hear inside the daw after coming back from your analog hardware so um let me clear some of this up and the cool thing you can like you can actually clear out you know what you don't want to see like i don't want to see a that none of that makes the difference right now because i don't even use it um so now that i've got my physical out set i will go back into my daw which is studio one and do this do a similar thing which set up my uh, my uh, audio ins and outs so if you're in your mixer you can actually right click anywhere scroll down to uh audio in and outs and now i got to set up my outputs okay so i'm going to leave my master track alone the master track will always be one and two for me okay i'm going to add four stereo pairs of audio of audio outputs one two three four all right gonna name number three i'm going to correspond it with um what i have set up in the the uh, afx man this guy's over here blowing it with the fuck with his 
a leaf blower and it's killing me. Okay, anyway, so now we got the music output left and right. That's three, four. So I'm gonna just do it like that and so on and so forth. So music, whoops, music. This was gonna be my vocals output. And then this is gonna be my uh, drums. And the last ten, uh, nine and 10 is gonna be my bass. The reason why I specifically choose the bass to be nine and 10 is because seven and eight on the D box, you can actually uh, hit a mono button and it goes, it takes that into true mono and then returns it back into the, uh, it sums those stereo. It's like another like internal summing. So seven and eight gets summed again to get like a true mono. It's gonna hit apply. And now that's set up, okay? Now, what you wanna do next is go to your input, all right? Add another stereo, and I'm just gonna name this Sum uh, Mix, okay? That's the Sum Mix coming from the Sum, the sum that's the Sum Signal or Summed Mix coming back into the DAW. So we're gonna use this, uh, use this to record here, all right? So remember we chose that input, that return to be 11 and 12, okay? The comp record, we got that set to 11 and 12. What's up, cousin? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Uh, so 11 and 12, that's gonna correspond and I'll show you how that works in a sec. So right now I'm gonna play this, gonna, it might be a little loud, but I'm gonna play the song and or the beat rather, and it's all gonna come through as normal. Boom, drums and all. And I've already got my, um, I've already got everything kind of like routed the same way or, or the a similar way here. So, um, these tracks, I've already got like my buses, right? So I got all my drums going into one bus, strings and things, that's mainly my melodic instruments. And then I got my uh, bass mix. So, now that I've had those ins and outs set up, I'm gonna change this to my output. I'm gonna make my bus, my like my main bass bus or bass aux or however you set it up in other dolls, go to my bass out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, my bad, fell. Yeah, I thought we was gonna I thought you meant you were gonna talk about uh uh something else, the business, you know what I'm saying? But um, and I'm gonna do the same. I got my drum bus, I want my drums out. And I want my um, music and things to go out the music output. A way to check here is to, in Studio One, is just click your outputs. It'll show all your outputs that you've already created. And then you just play it. You can't hear it, but you can see that now everything has a corresponding output. And I'm looking, I wish I could show you, but I'm looking at my um, D box and the lights are corresponding to the track, to the, to the outputs, okay? So how do I hear it now? You gotta create a way to hear it. So remember when we set up input 11 and 12 to receive from the D box? That's gonna be set up here, all right? You just create a track, just create a track, a normal audio track. I'm gonna make this a stereo one. It must be stereo. And you can already see Studio One recognizes that this is the only input we set up. So it's gonna route it to the sum mix. You just wanna monitor that like this you just monitor it boom um let me make sure i'm clicking the right button here so on your track here you just want to monitor if you don't monitor it you're not going to be able to hear the song so just leave that monitor button on because it's like you're actually live monitoring your outputs you feel me so um so this is my mix bus or my final mix or whatever okay so now we're now we should be able to hear it through our master track. See? So now we're live monitoring what's coming back into the DAW through the analog hardware. You feel me? Now I don't know about you, but it sounds a lot warmer and a lot more depth um, than what it did before. It's a little bit more um 
pleasing to listen to. OK, and then um, the next thing that we do is um, I also have a vocals track set up, but that's, you know, you get the gist. You would route all your vocals or your vocal bus through that vocal output over here. OK, and you can actually check your inputs here. So if you're not sure what's going on, you can check your inputs by doing the same. Just play it. And this is it. Your some mix input. All right. So just to recap, recap in AFX in, in I'm sorry, in your um, Orion studio, set up your outs from the computer, from the DAW. Okay. Drag them to your AFX in. All right. AFX in. What that's going to do is allow you to use effects from the, the uh, interface. Or you can just not do it and just drag it straight to your uh, comp record here. All right. And then set up your sum mix, the input, because now we have all these things going out. I'm sorry, I digress. You take your a your your comp play either straight to here or your if you have routed your AFX there, you bring it straight to your physical outs and then record it back in up here with your they call it preamp but that's actually your line inputs or preamp inputs and you just record that back in okay so what do i mean by recording that back in now that we've got our inputs and outputs set up hey what's going on tim now that we got our inputs and outputs set up for analog summing we can record the analog signal this is what we call printing you can also call, just label this your uh print track okay so I'm going to turn this low latency monitoring off. I don't really need it. Um, so you enable record and I'm just going to drop it right here on this bar right here and go ahead and record. Hey, what's going on, mom? My mom's on the street. What's up, mommy dukes? All right, so now that now that we've got the track recorded, right, we can mute these things and actually treat this as a single channel. Or you can even you can even disable these in Studio One. You can easily disable these to save your DSP. So what you would just do is disable, and it it actually disable all the tracks within each folder. Okay, so now I saved myself some DSP. I'm gonna go ahead and um uh what you call it uh start a mix bus process right so i had a, a, the original mix bus here but that was before i did the analog summon so i'm just gonna drag these over here so now i got a bus compressor and i got a deesser i don't know why i got this deesser but i think it was there for a reason but anyway i'm gonna turn that off and now i'm just working on the wave file Save myself some DSP after recording back in through analog gear and just processing it that way. Oh, and once you're ready to do that, you can just turn off monitoring because you won't be able to hear it. Now it's actually printed in the DAW. You can hear it now. So now I got a printed signal within the DAW. Boom. And that's called analog summing. So just a quick note, I do also have, um, so out after the D box, I have it running to two EQPs and a, and a warm audio bus compressor. So I do have a mix bus chain hardware, and then I record it back into, so it's not necessarily that I need the, to do anything else in the DAW, but excuse me, but it works out that way. Um, so now, um, let's talk about the AFX within the DAW, all right? I mean, sorry, the AFX within the um, interface. All right, quick and easy. There's a little AFX button. So I'm currently like, I have my actual, this microphone, what you're listening to is my stream microphone, but this microphone is actually has some processing within the DAW, within the software already right on board. So I can have low latency monitoring and recording, all right? Well, auto tune, deesser, a gate, uh, you know, the, the mag uh, emulations, a 78 slash 76 style and a, a 
a LA 2A emulation here. Now, let's say I want to do some processing on my drums, you know, outside the DAW, but not, but I don't want to use, um, but I don't want to use, you know, my, my DSP, my CPU, right? So I see that I have a, um, bus compressor on there. Let's just turn that off and we're going to work on, we're going to work on the, uh, what you call it here, the drums that way. So, um, what I like to do is hit shift and select the solo button. So that is solo safe, no matter what I click. Okay. So if it's going into something, it doesn't, it, it never like mutes itself. So, all right. So this is the way you route through the hardware. Okay. All right. So now that I got that up, so it's, it's a little bit finicky. So you got to kind of work your windows around, but this is how it works. Okay. So I know that my drums, uh, bus is going through, I think that's what, um, five and six. Nope. That's vocals. It actually labels it after. So it's a key about labeling your, your, uh, outputs because it tells you where you are. All right. So boom, I want a bus compressor. All right, boom. Let's go ahead and get the uh, 4K bus. It, by the way, all these plugins are phenomenally phenomenal. They sound pretty good. All right, phenomenally phenomenal. <laughs> all right, anyway, so check this out. Let me go ahead and play. Uh, shoot, why can't I hear it? Tripping. I'm tripping. Wait, maybe I missed something. One sec. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I disabled the uh, the tracks. One, let me turn those back on. All right. So let's solo that again. Oh, I mute. Oh, yeah. Also, solo safe the master track. All right. So now we're hearing coming straight through the uh, the analog summing. But now we're gonna uh, do some effects processing. You see, it's responding to that now. Let's go ahead and start compressing. I think my attack is a little bit too tight. Yeah. And you can high pass it. I'm gonna high pass it up to 80. So let me show you like this is this is what I would typically do, but check this out. The character of the SSL uh compressor. Let me uh put some game up, gain up. It sounds just like one to me. All right, so now I think I'm going to loosen up the attack a little bit. That's about where I want the gain reduction to be. All right, sounds good to me. And just bring up the gain a little bit. Let me just loop this section here. I'm just gonna stick with this section for now. Um, shoot. Boom. So the only thing, there we go. I think I have it set to, oh yeah, negative six dB. I think I was running a little bit hot. But either way, let's make up the gain here. You can really hear that grit coming from the SSL. And then you can add an EQ. You can add, I got the pull text. You got all that. You can have whatever you need in there. Boost the low end. Let's try a. Oh yeah, nice and warm. So these plugins sound pretty good to me. Very versatile. The only thing is, like, I don't know why. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe it is the uh, my mix tool. It's just too quiet. There we go. I was like taken away. 
6 dB of loudness that I could use later because you see my output's not even doing bad here. All right, so now I want, let's say I want to do something to my strings and things. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I think there's a glitch right now. This thing like um, it doesn't sync to the mixer. It's weird. Let's go back to the AFX. That's uh, three and four music. Let's just go ahead and add a little bit of glue. I'm going to add the uh, impressor, which is the distressor. Go ahead and uh, turn that input up. Turn the attack down a bit. Oh, that sounds good. I actually had this other process. You could even turn, like, I would recommend turning these off because this is before you're hitting, um, um, I'm sorry, this is uh, before you're hitting your uh, master channel. Yeah. So now I got a little bit of volume and a little bit of life on both of those. I really like the snap on that. Now let's work on my bass. All right, so now, now I can work on my bass. Boom. Let's go to nine and 10, that's my bass. And I just kind of want to, you know, warm that up. Let's go ahead and add, uh, let's add the, uh, let's go ahead and just add a stay, the stay lemon. Let's make it easy. Nice and fat, we bypass it. Nice and fat, I like that. All right, so now that we got that going on, now we got a mix using effects that effects processing on the interface and now we don't have to worry about our cpu we don't have to worry about all this other crazy stuff going on we got our cpu i mean we got our uh, dsp on in the interface doing the work okay now let's talk about let me go ahead and undo that stuff uh um no i'll leave it i'll leave it actually let's talk about recording your vocals all right so now I need to set up, again, going back and doing my um, inputs and outputs. I'm gonna set up my um, audio. Oh, what track is that? Sorry. And this is, again, you gotta go refer to your routing. And then once you have it set, you don't have to do anything else after that. You can just save it, um, save your, uh, also, in it with even within the Orion inter interface software, you save your uh, preset, and every time it opens, you got a preset, and then you can just change it, load it, and you can have different different setups. Um, so my AFX in, AFX out. Where is that going? Okay, so hmm. AFX out, and this is where it gets a little bit confusing. You got to figure out where exactly you are setting up your microphone. Oh, yeah, I took it away. So I'm going to set the, that output right here. So it's a mono signal. I have two here because I'm listening to myself in my uh, listen area. Um, but I'm going to take my one track, throw it here in AFX in. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. It's already set to AFX in. I'm going to take my AFX out and I'm going to go ahead and put it on my comp record. You see how it can get a little bit confusing. Comp record is anything you went, you want to go right back into the, uh, the, uh, DAW basically. So now I have my comp record set to track, uh, let's call it 13. All right. And going back to my DAW, I'm going to go to track 13 or input number 13, set that up. 
mic check. Now you can see that it's, you can hear, you can hear my um, vocals here. All right. Boom. Now I want to record. All right. So I'm going to record to, I'm going to select this one. I should have named it, but this is my microphone. Mic, mic check. check. Boom. You hear that? All right. Cool. 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 All, All right. right. So Studio One has a feature where you can um, not hear yourself. I'm just going to do that. I don't want to hear myself. Um, and I forgot how to do it. I might have to go to a setting here. Let's see. All right. So preferences. Because I only want to hear myself in my interface at this point because it's like it's too it'll be delayed because I already have like processing going on. So it'll just be delayed. But there's settings in here where you can not hear yourself. Oh, here we go. Audio. Uh, no, that doesn't do it. Console. Gosh, I forgot how to get there, man. So it's basically like you don't hear yourself when you record. That's really all you're doing. And I forgot how to doggone set that up, man. That ain't no good. That ain't no good. That's another video. Um, so if you want to record, let's just move on. We'll, we'll figure, figure it out later. later. You go, go ahead and uh, start, start that. And, and now, now you can, can hear me in the DAW. Let, let me, me mute, mute this. All right, now you can hear me in the doll. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Now you hear me. And you will hear also auto tune. Okay. I got processing on the interface now. And uh, let me go ahead and mute myself. I'm making myself sound very weird. Okay, here we go. Now we can hear the auto tune. All right, so now that I've got that set up, let me go ahead and bring this up. Track one and two was my processing. As you can see, I have this, that, and the third set up here. All right, so now I can just record myself with as much auto tune as I want. And I'm going to go ahead and just record some nonsense. All right, going back to the DAW. Oh, shoot. Looks like I'm even uh, clipping a little bit. Might, might, I might bring it back a little bit. And you can do that all real time. Yeah, la 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, da 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 da. All right, cool. Bam. All right, now I got pre-recorded effects. My CPU is barely moving, and I saved myself a whole bunch of um time and effort. Um, so boom. All right, I should have had this set to mono, but anyway. Now we can hear it. Let's take a listen. You see that? It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy once you have it set it up. Um, so let's see. I think, you can, and then. You can do takes and layers and all this cool stuff. I was going to add the tr add another track and drag that down. All right. So let's say I got that recording and I like it. I like how it went. All right. And I got my two dubs, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so now I think I'm done with doing that, but I want to use some more plugins from Antelope. They got the AFX to DAW um software all right i'm gonna go with the au version because on the new um on the new macbooks au works better all right so i'm gonna stop monitoring this all right i'm, I'm back on the other one all right check it out so 
Now I got this and I'm like, yo, I want this to sound good. I got my AFX to DAW plugin up. And I, you know, let's say I want to use some EQ. Let's add an EQ. Now it can sound bright. And this is now a plugin within the DAW. Now I got a plugin version and I can set this up. So the, the thing about AFX to DAW though, is the latency is crazy. You see that? 533 milliseconds. It's 533 milliseconds of latency, but the CPU is is not being not being utilized, okay? Zero. That's the benefit of it. So you got processing, but you got to consider that once you're done recording, you do all your recording the way I showed you with your effects going, you know, within the interface and then you do all your mixing with AFX to DAW, okay? Cuz that latency is it's ridiculous, but there's a reason for that. It's so that the information doesn't get lost in between the computer, the DAW, and your uh, the plugin, and so that um, you get the highest quality possible. All right, that's why there's a latency issue. People call it an issue, but it's a reason for it. So let's go ahead and um, let's go make it do what it do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you hear how good that sounds? Like, it's good. Like, there is a noticeable latency when you hit the space bar and then you're doing all this other stuff to stop the song. But I mean, the trade-off to me. Is is a pretty good trade off, especially when mixing. Like latency when mixing, eh? That's the you know it, it's a give and take here. Yeah, yeah, Add a compressor. Da, 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 da. You know what I didn't do was add a preamp. So let's say I recorded. Let's say that was a raw vocal. I want to add a ten seventy three. And I can just drag this in the, to change the order of it, bring back that output. The, the good thing is I record it pretty hot, so I'm gonna have to change the uh, impedance. And you could do any order of any order of plugins that you want. So let's go ahead and add an impressor to control. Like what I like about it is this: you hear that distortion in the recording um, on the plugin, but that distortion is actually pretty accurate to how you would drive into a Pultec style tube or into the uh 1073 mic pre it's actually pretty interesting how you know it's not like digital recording it's actual i mean digital recording it's not digital distortion it's it's emulating actual preamp distortion and compressor distortion and the eq distortion when you're hitting them tubes too hard so let's go ahead and um do a quick mix of the um this And it sounds a bit sounds a bit dark because I boosted that low end a bit. So let's see. Yeah, yeah, You can even use AFX to DAW on sends. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add an effects track. Just say add effects track and route this new recorded information to that effects track. And now I can add AFX to DAW stereo version. It's just AFX to DAW. 
and you got spatial um processing like um where is it modulation i didn't buy all of them but let's say i wanted a chorus all right let's say i wanted um something to kind of make me sound a little bit more wavy now i got this sending to that plugin yeah 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 duh, 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 duh. see here you see that latency is crazy man yeah 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 duh, 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 duh. oh shoot i didn't i'm over here changing stuff but i didn't change it to the wet signal yeah yeah oh there we go i yeah. i did the humanize i think humanize just makes it i don't know why that is even there if it's just gonna make it sound normal i don't know this weird yeah yeah so now i got a chorus effect now keep in mind again these are all like this it's all on the interface but it's also um causing serious latency so just consider that yeah and now you got that now you have that um let's see what other modulators i have let's try a bbd oh this is a demo i didn't buy, oh, i guess i didn't buy all of them or i didn't buy them okay i got the i at least got oh wait i don't have that wow Okay, now I know what I need to do later. <laughs> but yeah, now I mean that's the gist of it, you guys. AFX to DAW strictly recommend for mixing only because of the latency. AFX recording within the interface, have at it because it's low latency, like super low latency. Um and you got all your processing on now i don't have to have auto tune across all my tracks the only problem though is once it's recorded it's committed you got to commit to that recording so keep that in mind because now i can't take auto tune off or tweak it it's already recorded because i recorded it from within the interface um i'm going on about 45 minutes here y'all I just wanted to show y'all that and kind of explain how to analog sum using the Antelope Orion, how to use the uh, routing matrix. Um, let me bring that up actually. Um, the routing matrix and how to like basically print your mix back into your DAW. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's super cool. You know what I'm saying? Oh, where is my, uh, hmm. I don't know what happened to my window. Oh, there we go. I just had it hidden. So yeah, super powerful interface. Great interface. You just gotta know what how to use it. Definitely, you know, link up on Antelope Audio Pro users on Facebook. There's a couple um, specific um, Facebook pages with support. Antelope support is pretty good, but I recommend hitting up those pages because it's a lot of people with real world experience. Um, and they're it's much I think you get a much faster response because people have whatever question you have, people have already uh, probably experienced it. So I hope this helped you guys go back and review what I did. Um, ask me questions. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram and we'll you know, we can chop it up.